Okay guys, I'll show you the progress on this thing. We've got a, this is a DIY more, um, what's it called, Pro Strong, Pro Mini Strong. The interesting thing is it's 3.3 volts, you can see I've written on the bottom there. It's got a 3.3 volt regulator on it and it's got an 8 megahertz crystal. So we've got that connected up to this little, um, get it to focus, CC2500 um, transmitter module. And we're now using the, I know you probably can't see that, but it's on the hardware SPI pins. Um, 11, 12 and 13. A few other wires which I'll explain when we get to them. Uh, and we've got here, this this lead here is bringing in power into V-in uh, and a CPPM signal which is going into pin 2 at the moment and a ground. And then, then we've got the star of the show, the old uh, Fataba Gold uh, transmitter and we can use this to both power it and uh, send the CPPM signal. I'll just put that down while I plug this in. The old uh, 180 degree DIN on this thing, it's really ancient. Now plug that into there and switch it on. Uh, oh over here I've got um, a spectrum analyzer. So if we switch that on uh, we'll be getting uh, power into VIN and powering it um, and the PPM signal and you can see it's transmitting. Uh, and the other thing we've got uh, here is a little trim pot. I'll just twiddle that down like that. And over here we've got a FreeSky V8 receiver and a battery and a well-matched collection of servos. So if we plug that battery into the receiver and you can see it's just flashing. Uh, uh, why isn't it working? Well it's because we twiddled a trim pot uh, so it's not tuned anymore. This trim pot works the, uh, the fine tune of the radio. So if I try and put the camera down so you can see the flashing light and the trim pot together, uh, when I trim it into range we should get a... There we are, the, the light's come on solid now on the uh, receiver so we're tuned. Um, and what you can do if you're careful is you, f you find the two limits where it's not quite tuned and set the pot midway between. If you hook the thing up to a, um, uh, a serial monitor it also displays the current tuning values and things. You don't have to use a trim pot, you can use, uh, you know, you can just set it in the software. So uh, now, I know this one servo is a bit lazy, there we go. So now we've got aileron, uh, elevator, uh, throttle, don't need a very big throttle servo, uh, rudder, and this is on an auxiliary channel, that could be like flaps or something. Uh, anyway, there we go. So as I say, the one servo, this one, is a bit uh, dodgy. There we are. Right, what else have we got? Um, I'll unplug the dodgy servo in case that's loading up the battery too much. And we'll go on to uh, binding. How do we bind? Um, so I'm going to switch the uh, transmitter off. And I'm going to put the uh, receiver into bind. So I need to disconnect the battery, hold down its little button, and uh, reconnect the battery. Uh, 
and you can see on these old three sky ones, I don't know how well it shows up on the camera, but you get a red and a green uh, LED at the same time. Um, now to put the uh, to put the transmitter section into ground, you see I've got this white wire which is currently going to pin 9. If we link that to ground, that's like a bind button. Now you don't have to do it this way. You can you can set it to auto bind every time without even using an input and it, it'll bind for 10 seconds of power up. But with that link that will now go into bind for 10 seconds. So if we look at the receiver, switch the transmitter on, which will power the thing up. There you can see we're getting a rapid flashing now which indicates that it's bound. Now I could actually leave that bind wire on because as I say it only works for the first 10 seconds. But I'll take it back off again and we need to cycle the power on the receiver and we're now rebound. And we can see the now the bind uh, wire also works as a range test. So if we look on the uh, spectrum analyzer, you can see we've got quite a strong signal, we're very close. Uh, when I connect the bind wire now, it doesn't have to be the same button, but I've got it on the same button. Um, you can see that the signal's dropped off enormously. If I put that really, really close, There is a signal there, I promise you, uh, but the spectrum analyzer isn't even picking it up. But the FreeSky receiver, which is much more sensitive, is still working, as you can see. So that's how you do a bind check at the field. As I say, the bind doesn't have to be on the same uh, button uh, input as the range test. It could be two separate buttons if you want. If I take the range check back off again, you can say we're back to a full strength signal. Uh, I think that's about it. So there we go. Progress has been made. Thanks for watching.